Hi, and welcome to another episode of The PH. I'm your host, Donnell Christian. On today's show, we'll discuss air pollution. But first, let's get back to basics in our feature segment with some life facts. Air is a source of life for humans, animals, and plants. It's a valuable resource that is needed at its best quality. Human activities have led to a steady decline in air quality and an increase in air pollution. According to the National Geographic, air pollution is defined as chemicals or particles in the air that can harm the health of humans, animals, and plants. It also damages buildings. There are two categories of air pollution. Indoor air pollution, for example, from cooking and heating methods, and outdoor air pollution. Outdoor air pollution is caused by activities in sectors like construction, agriculture, manufacturing, and transportation. These industries often include the use of machinery, chemicals, and toxic materials that release pollutants into the air. The impact of air pollution on health is significant. The United Nations Environment Program says around 7 million people die every year from diseases and infections related to air pollution. This is more than five times the number of people who die in road traffic collisions. The World Health Organization, WHO, says that air pollution is a major environmental and health risk. The WHO believes that by reducing air pollution, countries can reduce the burden of disease from stroke, heart disease, lung cancer, and both chronic and acute respiratory diseases, including asthma. Since air pollution is linked to these serious diseases, as well as the climate change crisis, it means that there is an urgent need for global action to improve our air quality. So how can this be achieved? And what are the other effects of air pollution? We'll find out more from our experts in the next segment. Our first guest today is regional air quality expert at the United Nations Environment Program, Luisa Gonzalez. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to talk about air pollution. Can you explain the two types of air pollution? With every break we take, we suck in tiny particles that can damage our lungs, hearts, and brain, no? and can, a, a, can be a host for other health problems. So fine particles that we, that we cannot see um, that pollute our air it mostly come from human activities, such as burning fossil fuels to generate electricity and transportation, waste burning, agriculture, and other chemical and mining and other type of industries. So um, PM 2.5 is the name that we have um, done to the, um, we have given to the fine particles that have a diameter less uh, shortened than 2.5 microns. So it's particles that we cannot see, but are, they are present in the air. And, um, Ground level ozone, for example, we call tropospheric ozone, is not emitted directly into the air, but is created by chemical reactions between um, oxides of nitrogen and polaric organic compounds. This happens when pollutants, for example, emitted by cars, power plants, industrial boilers, refineries, chemical plants, react chemically in the air in presence of sunlight. So, um, as you mentioned, these PM2.5 particles, tiny particles, and ground level or tropospheric ozone is, uh, are, are the two of the most um, complicated pollutants, complicated in terms of uh, control of sources and because um, they have in impact on, on our health. And what would you say is the impact of air pollution on climate change? So air pollution and climate change are closely linked as all major pollutants have an impact on the climate and most share common sources with greenhouse gases. So um, it's, it is also important because if we take some measures to improve our air quality, we can also have benefits in terms of mitigation of climate change. So just to give you a, a good example of this link uh, of the air pollution and climate change is black carbon uh, or soot 
it's a component or a fraction of the PM2.5 particles. And black carbon, for example, contributes to the air pollution and contributes to climate change. Mm, just to give you uh, more information about it, because it's, it's very interesting. Black carbon is a short-lived climate pollutant. It means that uh, once emitted, black carbon is in the air around some days or weeks. And this uh, has the um, capacity to absorb, to retain um, solar energy, and that contributes also to, to the climate change, to the rising of the temperature that we have this problem now in terms of climate change. So um, yeah, as, as you mentioned, there is an impact of air pollution also on, on climate change. And what is the long-term impact of climate change on the environment? Yeah, well, um, I think uh, evidence and scientific evidence and studies are um, uh, evolving every day. Just to give you some examples, for example, we can say that uh, the decrease in sea ice uh, or the increase of the sea level, loss of biodiversity. And we also see that we have extreme um, climate events. For example, uh, when we have the summer, uh, we see that temperatures are higher in, in some years. Or when, home, when we have winter, in some regions, we have very low temperatures that are not or are um, different uh, comparing with historic levels. So we can have these extreme events of summer and winter, and even in terms of um, the rain, precipitation of the rain. So maybe some, some examples of the long-term impact. And how would you say these adverse changes in the environment affect our health? It's important to say that, for example, the World Health Organization has stated that the air pollution is the greatest environmental threat to public health globally. And it is estimated that about 7 million premature deaths every day are attributed to the air pollution. So um, yeah, the, the, the deadliest illnesses linked to PM2.5, for example, are stroke, heart disease, lung disease and cancer. It is well evidence, scientific evidence and medical evidence that the high levels of, to be exposed to high levels of fine particles also contribute to other illnesses, such as diabetes, and have associated with uh, impairing cognitive development in children, for example, and, and even um, exacerbating me mental health problems. So it is interesting that um, the, uh, every day uh, we have more evidence of the impact of, of air pollution on our health. Can you explain how air pollution affects countries' economies or causes a burden on health systems? What an, an interesting question, yeah, because uh, as, as we have learned over the, the years working on all these environmental problems, Air pollution and other environmental problems are not just um, health problems, but it also have an economic burden on the economies, as, as you mentioned. Um, for example, there are different methodologies to estimate the cost of air pollution on countries. World Bank, for example, have developed some uh, studies and documents, papers that we can um, uh, where we can find information, detailed information, but just to give you a, an idea, we are now um, able to estimate, for example, the loss of, um, of productive labor uh, due to premature death, because we now know that pollution reduces also quality of life. And when we say that uh, we have premature deaths, uh, it means that we have loss of productivity in countries and, for example, in incomes to, to, to the countries. So um, just to give you also an example, air pollution can also degrade natural ecosystems and, and 
countries have to invest in, in, in this to, to, um, to mitigate the impacts of, of pollution on ecosystems and the loss of biodiversity. So we also have an impact in, in economic terms. What are some reasons why air pollution disproportionately affects the poor or poor populations? That, that's a, also an interesting question because it is evidence that air pollution does not affect people in the same way. They are most uh, poor people, for example, or women, children that are more affected for, for the air pollution than others. So mm, just to give you an example, uh, in, in homes, for example, when you don't have access to clean fuels for cooking or for heating, you have to use, um, for example, coal or, um, or wood to cooking, to, to prepare your, your, your food or to cooking or heating. And the fact that, that to not have access to clean fuels in homes, in, in households. Um, so it, it means that you have to uh, burn wood or coal and you have air pollution, uh, an air pollution source in your house. Another example that can I share with you is that um, in countries that cannot invest, for example, in public transport, uh, electric public transport, for example, you are going to be more exposed to air pollution. So uh, that's right that uh, to have access to technologies, to um, best practices to, for example, in industries, if you have access to good, to clean fuels and good practices, you can, you can have in your country um, better industries, greener industries. And how can this be addressed? Yeah, okay. I, I think that we can all contribute to, to have a, a cleaner air in different ways. For example, to the countries, I think countries can um, have, uh, can decide on, on, on good policies, can, can develop good policies to promote cleaner industry, cleaner transportation systems. So energy, I think it's important that we can work together like uh, governments, private sector, uh, universities and wishes, researchers, um, public so social, social uh, civil society. We can work all together to um, create some um, synergies to develop policies in, 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 that, in that case. And for example, we are citizens, we can also contribute to a better, to a cleaner air, for example, to use the, the to ride bicycle or to walk if we have to, to, to do something, to, if we can walk. And what about individuals? How can they play an active role in reducing air pollution? Yeah, I think that individuals, have, we, we have, Power in the sense that um, we can contribute to rise awareness of the of an environmental problem that we cannot see it's, it's invisible, and that's why maybe it could be difficult to to highlight this environmental problem, and I appreciate that you with this interview in this you can we can talk about air pollution because. It's, it's not visible like an environmental problem, but it's very, very important and have an impact. So we can raise awareness, we can organize ourselves, create, for example, organizations, civil organizations to create, um, to, to, to have dialogue, to have conversations with those governments and those, who have, those stakeholders that can develop policies to cleaner our, the air we breathe. So we can organize, we can propose also solutions, we can establish conversations with, with um, policymakers. 
Thanks so much for joining the show, Ms. Gonzalez. Thank you for the invitation. Our next guest is Environmental Health and Analytical Services Manager at ESL, Rashida Khan Hack. Welcome. From your years of experience in solving environmental pollution problems, what are some key findings in Jamaica regarding air quality? So my years of conduct in environmental and occupational um, assessments, audits, some of the key areas that we have realized is that there's a general lack of understanding of air quality and how does it affect us. Um, we're all living beings, meaning that we require oxygen, which we get through the breathing of air. And if we don't have good air quality, what you're finding is that we may have the quality of our life, our well-being, sorry, and the quality of our life being affected negatively. Um, air quality also affects our environment, right? Meaning that what is in our air, eventually it is washed out by our rain into our soils and into our water. And this can affect our agriculture and infrastructure. So people understanding what is air quality and how it affects us, I think that is one of the, the, the main determining factor in how people respond to it. And we need to beef that up. And I find that there's a really a general lack of sensitization of the importance of air quality. There is a lack of revision when it comes to our air quality standards. So normally a country will, will, check, will check, will we will set their air quality targets based on some sort of data that they have gathered. And then they'll set targets and they will move towards those targets by implementation of legislation and so on and monitoring and enforcement. That, that, that there's a sense of a lack of monitoring and enforcement, which needs to be beefed up, right? We also need to look at the transportation sector and the agricultural sector and see how their, fall, their, their emissions are impacting our air quality and to provide legislation and enforcement and monitoring in that area. So these are some of the key areas that we see that there is deficiency based on my years of experience working in this area. And what would you say are some causes of poor indoor air quality? We need to understand that indoor air quality is also dependent on ambient air quality, which is outdoor air quality. Um, research has shown that while we have ambient air quality, indoor air quality can be four or more times more concentrated. And this is because we're now in an enclosed space, right? Um, in a lot of buildings, like for our homes, we're naturally ventilated, but we can open our windows and we have that air exchange, which will allow us to remove pollutants and have better air quality coming in. In larger buildings, which requires a ventilation system, such as a HVAC system, which is a heating, ventilation, and AC system, you find that the design of such system, right, may not be properly done. And these systems, they behave like the lungs for us. Okay, so we use our lungs to breathe in and out to move. For a building, the ventilation system is what allows the building to breathe and to create that environment where it is safe for persons to work in. So these, if these systems are not properly designed or maintained, what you find is that it can significantly affect air pollution inside of the building, right? There is also the issue of employees on a whole not understanding that they also, not only employers, but employees also play an important role in maintaining good air quality indoors. So our actions can actually impact our air quality indoors. Persons who love to spray, for example, perfume in closed spaces or, you know, we're in a pandemic right now, so we find that we sanitize a lot more. But when we sanitize, we actually increase the level of volatile organic compounds within a space. So we find that if we share in that space with persons with respiratory illnesses, such as asthma, bronchitis, or so on, we can actually impact this person's health a lot more if we don't have a proper ventilation system. We find that our storage of paper you know, not storing them properly, we can accumulate dust, which now can become airborne if they are disturbed, which can affect persons, right? Moisture intrusion, when we have all of that cracks and leaks coming into our building, they can increase relative humidity within a space, um, creating perfect environment for microorganisms such as yeast and mold and so on to build. Um, or the equipment that we use in a space, you know, some equipment requires us to have them in special areas that have proper ventilation, if we put them in spaces where they're densely populated, you know, the pollutants from these equipment will affect persons. What issues can poor indoor air quality cause at our homes and our businesses? Persons can get lethargic because they have high levels of carbon dioxide within a space, um, respiratory illnesses, they can have the sinuses being triggered a lot more. Um, discomfort persons can have fatigue, headaches, being exposed to some chemicals. 
Um, you can have high levels of yeast and mold if you have high moisture control, um, moisture intrusion or moisture level within the hole, which can affect persons in different ways. Some mold, you know, the byproducts of their metabolism can be actually toxic to us, um, us in productivity, you know, and all of that. So these are some of the, the, the issues from indoor air quality problems. What you find is that indoor air quality really links directly to our, 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 our team productivity. So if we don't have an environment that is conducive to productive work, you know, you have lost in revenue from that time, from that. Not having an AC system or a ventilation system that you're not maintaining can, you know, really run you in a very high cost to replace, especially if it's not properly maintained. So you have your, your health of your workers and yourselves that you're putting in jeopardy. And then there is a cost to you know to replace system rather than if you were maintaining the system, it will be a lot less now for you to fix it or to get it to where you want it to be. And what would you say are some tips to ensure good indoor air quality? First one, if your building is not a naturally ventilated one, make sure that whatever ventilation system you're using is fit for purpose. That is important. You know, have your, your engineers that come in that are specialized in, 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 in ventilation system come in and look at the space, understand the layout of the space, what the space is going to be used for, and then have a system design. That means if you plan to do renovations, you need to make sure that that is also a part of your system design. So that when you're ready to renovate the space, your, your ventilation system can accommodate that re renovation, you know, and you still have very good air quality after the in, um, renovation. Housekeeping is also very important. We have a thing where we find people out of mind, out of sight. So you find that people don't clean behind um, furniture or high spaces and so on. And we can have accumulation of dirt and dust, which can be a problem for some persons, persons with allergies. Um, limiting the use of chemicals indoor, right? Or using them in when well ventilated areas. So whenever your cleaners come in, make sure when they're cleaning the space is ventilated, make sure the AC systems are not on, especially if it's a system that doesn't have a fresh air intake. So these are some of the things that we have to look at when we're doing it so that we can minimize impact in indoor air quality. Um, printers and, and shredders, make sure that they're placed in well ventilated areas are below in front, below um, in areas that we have extracted so we can pull that pollutants out, especially if they're used in a lot, a lot that, may have been, that may be a problem. Your files, make sure they're, they're properly stored, they're stored in containers or in cabinets, all right, where they can be eased, where dust can be easily settled on them. Those are some of the other areas we can look at. Okay, and plants, don't overwater your plants. Um, soil is a natural breeding ground for yeast and mold. If you wet it, if it's too wet, you're not creating that environment for the proliferation of yeast and mold. Indoor air quality is everybody's responsibility. And um, you need to have direct and open, transparent communication between employers and employees. Persons need to understand that they're responsible for their health and as such, their activities should be in line where you're preserving not only your health, but your neighbor's health. And I think that, you know, having a good understanding whenever you have any work being done on your building, make sure you use persons that are licensed and that they understand what they're doing. Make sure they can answer the questions and make sure you, you, you always ask the question, will it impact, you know, my workers? Will it impact my health? So that they make sure that when they come to you, they're able to give you a holistic picture on what they're doing and how they're going to go about doing it. So that you know can communicate with your team members to let them feel safe in the space. So my my, my, my advice is that we just need to all understand that indoor air quality is everybody's responsibility, not just our employers, but also the employees. And we all need to take a vested interest in what goes on in our space to protect our health. It was a pleasure having you on the show. And to our viewers, thanks for watching. Connect with us. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at GetThePH. Until next time, we leave you with our inspirational quote. Breathe deeply until sweet air extinguishes the burn of fear in your lungs and every breath is a beautiful refusal to become anything less than infinite.